Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Judd. Thank you for joining us today for online worship. We're excited that you're here. Take a moment if you can and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, Instagram to keep up with the latest that's going on here at Foley Assembly. Let's get to worship this morning. Pray that you're blessed.
physical copy of Connect Card. Thank you for being with us. Those of you joining us for service this morning via Facebook or our website, thank you for joining this morning with us in the house. Glad that we could come together and worship Jesus. Amen. Second Kings, if you have your Bible and turn on with me, your Bible or turn in your Bible, chapter 4, verse 38. I've, I've, I've shared this passage of Scripture, and this is every time I go to the Word or something to just... Uh, it sparks in my heart again. Verse 38, the story of the prophet Elisha who has been called upon the scene of a crisis and dilemma that has happened. And uh, he has been summoned to Gilgal. The Lord has said, go back down again there to Gilgal. And there's a dearth. There was a famine in the land. There was a drought. There was a, 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 a time of, of distress. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. That, that school there, that place, facility there were. And uh, they were learning and at the feet of the prophet. And he said to his servant, set on a great pot. Now, this is where our motto for our church comes in. Where we meet, we eat. It's crucial. <laughs> hey, I'm just going to say this real quick. We had a good time last night. Uh, men from uh, Big Fish came over. And uh, appreciate Brother Jim and Brother James, Gary, and uh, all these young guys came, and we cooked, had a wonderful time together. And, uh, uh, you know, we just sat on a pot. You know what I'm saying? Actually, it was a grill. And, but, you know, I, I joke about that because, you know, Pentecostal folks, we can get together and we can eat. You know what I'm saying? And uh, God's just good. He said, Elijah, I, knew, I know he's Pentecostal because he said, set on a meal. <laughs> Let's get together. Let's eat. And it said, settle a great pot and seed pottage for the sons of the prophet. Even in the midst of a distressing time, even in a time where there wasn't a lot to do, he said, let's get together and fellowship. Let's have food. Uh, there's just another lot of bad things going on. A lot of, there's a drought going on. There's a lot of despairing going on. There's a lot of down going on. But he said, let's get together and let's eat. And let's get together and fellowship. And he said that, it said that, that one went out, the, he gave him instructions. He said, and to find uh, fields to gather for the pottage. And it said he went out, in verse 39, into the field to gather. And one went into the, and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gourds in his lap, full. And came and shred them into the pot of pottage. For they knew what, not what they were, didn't know how to clue. So they came and poured for the men to eat. Man, it was smelling so good. Yeah, last night, you ever, your wife's cooking dinner, and all of a sudden the peach cobbler smell just wafts through. Or whatever it is. And it just it comes through, and it's just like the smell fills the house. It said, they poured out for them to eat. I, I, I can imagine they were hungry. They, they couldn't wait. Uh, when the grill was on last night, I walked outside and I was like, man, this is going to be good because I could smell it. My stomach started saying, feed me now. And they said that they poured out for them to eat for they, they, did, they, they came and shredded in the pottage. And it said that they poured out from the eat and it came to pass as they were eating the pottage. They cried out and said, oh, thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. They could not eat. Imagine looking at something that smelled so good and looked so good, Brother Tommy, but you couldn't eat it. That, was, that would be real sad. They had set their heart to eat. Their stomach was ready to receive, but they could not eat of the pot. Someone noticed something was wrong in it. But verse 41 says, The prophet Elijah said to them, Bring meal. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out to the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. This morning, the Lord helping us, I want to preach, it's not too late to get God involved. It's not too late to get God involved. Father, thank you this morning. God, I thank you for the word that brings life. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, we just sang worship and praise unto you in your presence, your spirit in this building today. God, I thank you, Lord, that we're no longer slaves to fear but, Lord, we are a child and children of God. And I thank you, Lord, for these that have gathered this morning. I thank you, Lord, that there's victory in the camp. I thank you, Lord, that your power is available. And, oh, God, we ask that as we go into the word now, that you would just open hearts and lives and spirits right now. And in your presence, Lord, we agree together. That's touching any one thing, Lord, that it shall be done. And, God, we agree together. There's victory for that person this morning. In your name, Jesus, we declare it. And we give you praise for what's done 
And you agree with that this morning? Everyone said amen and amen. Elisha is directed by the Lord. Go down to Gilgal. There's a famine, a drought. People are hungry. School of prophets, they're down there, the men that sat at his feet. And Elisha instructs them to go put on a pot of soup. A pot of soup. And a servant, he said, I want you to go and gather herbs to put in this pot. And so the servant who goes out, he begins to gather. He, he finds this and he finds this. He looks at that and he gets this and that and that and this. And he begins to fill up his lap with everything. He goes and even finds a wild vine. It says that he picks from the wild vine and he, not knowing what he's doing, he gathers it up in his lap and he takes it to the kitchen. And he puts it in the pot and it begins to cook and it begins to boil and the meal is prepared and it's poured out and, and they begin to eat. But it's noticed that there is death in the pot and it says we cannot eat thereof because there's death. There's poison in the pot. We can't eat of this. It's, it's no good anymore. It's just let's just pour it out. Let's just get rid of it. We, we thought we were going to eat but now we've been... We've been uh, 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 exposed and we've been we've we've known this and we can't eat it it's no good I don't know about you when I uh, dig over in the refrigerator and uh, I'm hungry for something specific and I look at the date after I eat it we might have a problem but I was hungry there's several things I want to share with you this morning first thing is everything looks good when you're hungry (laughs) You don't really think about it, right? I, y'all have been, been so hungry that you're just like, man, I could, eat this, I could eat the side of a car. I mean, it's just like anything, a cardboard, a shoe. I mean, you name it. I've been hungry. I come in. Uh, for, you ever fasted? And you, you know it's time to end the fast. You're like, everything, cracker juice. You can, you can hear a cracker crack a block away. You're so hungry. I mean, you're, you're starving for something. And, and when you're hungry, you'll begin to eat things that you never thought you'd eat. It looks really good. I, I don't care how hungry you get. Uh, sometimes when you, you know, I, when I was a kid, I would not eat collard greens. I, I know. <laughs> and, you know, I would say, Mom, I don't want that food. I, I don't know if it's something else, but, yeah, 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 just, but son, if you get hungry enough, you'll eat it. <laughs> And I know, because whenever, you know, I wanted a Snickers bar and popcorn and, uh, you know, candy and stuff like that. But, you know, whenever I, that wasn't available, I was hungry. I was willing to eat, you know. And, and when we're hungry, so everything that, you know, sometimes we wouldn't, we wouldn't eat some things that, that you know, that I've, I've seen videos of, of those in third world countries and these missionaries that, that uh, uh, we've been involved with missions and gone down to places and y'all, it is heartbreaking to watch people dig through garbage, dig through things that we would never touch with a 10-foot pole, but they're digging in garbage to find something to eat. They're just looking for a piece of bread. They're looking for something that they can, that they can eat because they're hungry. And they don't care what it smells like or where it's from. It's garbage. But when you're hungry, everything appeals to you. And, you're, and, and, and I begin to think about this. Is in a drought they're in, and there's, there's not a lot of food to go around. The things are slim, and it's, it's hard to come by. I'll tell you, America and the world today, there is a spiritual drought. There is a spiritual hunger. There is a void of darkness, and people are hungry. They are hungry for the truth. And they are starving for somebody, for any morsel of something. And they're ingesting any and everything they can get. They're looking to find somebody to help them. They're looking for nourishment spiritually. You can Google on YouTube anything you want to know. On YouTube, you can find how to do anything. And there is number one top searches on YouTube is about spiritual things. People are... They're, they're hungry. They're wanting to know about God, about the afterlife, what heaven is, what hell is, what is who is Jesus. 
What is prayer? What is, there's a void, there's a hunger, and there is a desire in people's heart today. And they are trying to grab any and everything they can, Sister Margaret. And they're feeding out of stuff. And I'll tell you, they are feeding from things that are very dangerous. They are listening to gurus. They're listening to self-help people. They're listening to this guy on YouTube, and, and it has a good sound to it. It looks good. It, sound, it smells good. It, 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 it appeals to the mind and what they're going through, but it's not feeding them. They're hungry. They're, there's a desire in America today in our culture. People are looking for something. People are desiring, and they're not looking to religion. They're not looking to establish religion. If they, I'll tell you something. Uh, the world is turning to other things, church. The world is turning to all these, it's so many things, but they're languishing in despair. There's people that get on social media. They get on uh, YouTube channels, and they're hearing things. The devil told Eve in the garden he gave her enough truth to give her a lie, to feed her a lie. And there's so many things and devices of the enemy out there today that it's just enough truth. It's just enough. It looks like the good stuff. It's growing right next to the good stuff. But this servant, when, you know when you're hungry, your, your vision gets cloudy. <laughs> you're here. You know, when I'm hungry, I can't hardly see. I, I can't see or hear. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all, I know it's getting close to time to eat. Amen. Just try to focus with me in just a few more minutes. <laughs> we, we lose our senses. We lose our perception of things. And, and I don't know if this man was so hungry that he just discarded judgment or discretion or discernment. He just said, looks good. Let's get it. I'm ready to eat. I'm not going to stay out here all day and try to find something. I got to have something in my belly. And they said he gathered a wild vine into his lap. He gathered a wild vine in his lap. His judgment it was clouded often in the trial, often in the, in the uh, crisis of the moment. We're tempted to take shortcuts spiritually. We're tempted to feel that the end justifies the means. It doesn't matter how I get there. I just need to get there. And many times we'll find ourselves gathering wild gourds into our lap. Harmful things. The devil wants us to get into a place where we're not as guarded as we should be. He wants to get us to where we'll let our guard down. He wants us to, uh, to not be paying attention. Let me tell you, when, when you're in a dry season, when you're going through something, Amen. It's easy to, to be, to be uh, lax. It's easy to let your focus and your guard down. But oh, this man gathered a wild vine in his lap. Let me tell you, be careful about what you gather. Be careful about what you gather. Young people, let me talk to you a minute. I know you want to get married. I know you want to be in a relationship. But you gather a wild vine in your lap, you're going to be regretting it the rest of your life. There's some people that got in a hurry and wish that awaited. There's a lot of people today, I'm talking to somebody this morning because, uh, uh, you know what, if we're not careful, married couples, uh, uh, I'll tell you, it's easy to pick up a wild vine of a nation in a dry time. Well, we had a falling out and we had an argument. Let me tell you, the devil loves to get in there and begin to sow things in your life and you'll gather a wild vine in your lap if you're not careful. Animosity and bitterness and hatred will start getting in there. You say, well, I'm justified in being mad at him, and I'm going to give him the silent treatment. He's going to learn. He ain't never going to do that no more. You'll gather a wild vine in your lap. Bitterness and anger and animosity and division will set in. Hey, man, somebody's going to the church. You go to church, and, and if you're not careful, and you get in a dry season, and, and, and you're not praying like you should, reading the Bible like you should, all of a sudden you find yourself, you gather up a, a critical spirit in your lap, and all of a sudden the preacher and the singing and the preaching and the, and the pews and, the, and all that, the greeters and all the, the Sundays, they're just not good enough. You gathered a wild vine in your lap, and the devil's not going to tell you. You've gathered something poisonous in your possession. You've got something in your life that, that, you, that you thought, well, it's justified. You know, I'm just hungry. But it went out into that field and it began to gather things. He began to get, and you know something else? The thing about this, he was by himself. 
You know, if the devil can get you by yourself, if he can just pull you away, get you separated from people, who can say, what's, what's going on right now? What are you doing? Can I pray for you? They look you in the eyeballs. You know what I'm talking about? And they can look down. And, the devil wants you to get away from those people because he knows if he can get you going solo, if he can get you alone, if he can get you by yourself, if he can, if he can find you out below, he can get you. He can, you'll be gathering wild vines. And, and you, after a while, you'll be like, all of a sudden, everybody's wrong. They're, the preacher's wrong. The singing's off. The, 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 it's just bad because you've gathered a wild vine up in your life. Solo. One went out into the field. I'm going to tell you, fellowship is important. Church is important. Amen. Being together. I love being together because I'm encouraged by y'all this morning. Amen. I was encouraged in the first service. I'm encouraged today. Amen. When you get together with people that love Jesus, there's something about being together with God's people. You got to rub shoulders with all the folks all week long that don't love Jesus, a cussing and a carrying on and, and denigrating God in the church. But you know what? It's good to come into the house of God. It's good to come into the presence of God and, and people that love to raise their hands and they're not worried about. Hey, don't go so low is what I'm trying to say. Well, I can worship God all by myself. I know. You can. But the devil's going to pull you away. It's just like a coal off the fire. You'll cool off if you get away from the heat. You'll die. Your fire will be just, you'll just simmer down. I'm cooling off. The devil went, don't go so low. The devil knows he can get you. It's easier to harm you, and it's easier for you to pick something up. Because if I was with somebody, they say, hey, don't touch that. How many of you got in poison ivy before? Uh, that was a great experience for me. I learned what it was. And you know, whenever you have somebody with you that's watching you, I got your six, bro. You need somebody that can see your blind spots. Don't go by yourself. Don't try to walk this way. By. Jesus even comforted his disciples. He knew how important it was. He said, I must go away, but I will send you another. And he will be with you. He understood it's important. We don't do this by ourselves. We need one another. I need you. I need the children of God. I need the church. I need this fellowship. I can't be my, because after a while, the devil will tell you stuff, and you don't have anybody to bounce it off of. You don't have anybody to, you know, to call you out on that stuff, because the devil, he'll, he'll feed your mind with things. So get with your bunch. Stay with your bunch. Don't do it alone. This man found himself pulling poison into his lap, a wild vine, because nobody was there to help him. People will do things they normally wouldn't do when they're hungry and alone. You'll find yourself tempted by things that you normally wouldn't have been tempted with when you're hungry and alone. When you're desperate for God to move and you can't see any answer anywhere, the devil sees his opening. We need somebody. Here it is. We need somebody. In verse 40, it said that they were eating and someone noticed. Who can identify harmful things? Who can see the poison? We need a church today. We need the, the presence of God. We need somebody that knows. You know, that's important. This man, whoever it was, they were sitting there eating, and all of a sudden they took a spoonful and they were looking at it and said, you know what, this looks like, this, this looks like some bad stuff. Hold up. They said, stop. Everybody stop. Stop, stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's poison. This is, you can't eat, we can't eat this. We can. I'm glad that there's people you, that, that knows the word of God. There's people. You know, there, there's times when, when we need people to sound the alarm. Sometimes we think we're doing all right, but we need people that are spiritually aware. Somebody in the house. That's why we need the church. We need the word of God because we don't know sometimes what's being brought in our life. But if there's a pastor or if there's a Sunday school teacher or if there's a mentor or somebody in our life that says, hold up. There's something going on here. Don't, that's poison. 
That's poison. That's death. That's death. I'll tell you, will we notice? I know there's things going on in America right now in church. We need to stand up and say, hold up a minute. There's death in the pot. Amen. There's death. There's destruction. We just don't need to keep silent. I'm glad somebody spoke up and said, Judd, you need to get right. That's death, man. Don't fall off in it. I'm glad there was a preacher that pointed his bony finger at me and said, there's a hell and there's a heaven. And if you don't know Jesus, you're going to that place. But if you know him, he's told me the truth. Yeah, well, pastor, it may offend somebody. They're trying to eat. (laughs) They might get their feelings hurt. What about the cook? They did, they worked so hard. (laughs) That will, are we worried about, if I was worried about feelings, we'd have quit this a long time ago. The truth offends people. Truth will offend, it goes contrary to us, but that's death in the pot. They may not like it, but they will appreciate it later if you'll tell them. I would appreciate it if somebody told me. You know what I'm saying, Sonia? If somebody told me, Pastor, you eat that, you're going to die. I stand up here and tell you this morning, sin will destroy your life. Sin will destroy you. It will take you farther than you want to go, deeper than what you ever thought you'd go. It costs you more than you want to pay. It will destroy you. And sometimes people get offended that we preach against all the stuff that's going on. And we call sin, sin. And we call black. There's confusion everywhere. People don't even know what they are in. They are any minute of the day. But I'll tell you something. The Bible is still true. And it will help us. This country, our culture, our community needs to hear the truth. They may not like it, but they'll appreciate it that he didn't die. That the church stood up. It's no time to be silent, church. I said, it's no time to be silent, church. Oh, we go along to get along. We go along and not offend people and, you know, just be quiet and, and don't rock the boat, pastor. Don't call it out. This is too critical to stay silent. We can't just, you know, well, let's pacify everybody. You know, they, they have worked so hard on that suit, but why should I speak up? Somebody speak up. Amen. Will somebody speak up? When you're confronted on your job, will you speak up? Will you begin to say, it's the truth. I know that it doesn't, it doesn't just, you know, uh, soothe you, but this truth will set you free. Amen. This truth is what's right. It's the word that will set you free. So, so, so if, uh, uh, you know, I'm not apologizing for the word that we preach Sunday in and Sunday out. It's the truth. And, and the devil will try to deceive so many people. There are charlatans out there. They are preaching stuff that's got just enough truth mixed in. And they're telling people. All kinds of stuff. Living in adultery, got wives and kids all over Atlanta. And they preaching, and all of the country, all over the America. And they're living all these things that they're preaching. And they've got just enough truth. They want to, you know, it's just. But somebody stand up and say, this is, there's poison in the pot. There's poison. Minister, I'll tell you something. Just because it's got ministry tacked on to it don't mean it's of God. There's a lot of people say, well, I heard a word from God. If it doesn't line up with the Bible, I'm sorry. So I had a revelation of God. If it doesn't, if the Holy Spirit witnesses in your heart something's wrong, you better get out of there. There's poison in the pot. There's a lot of people who say, well, I follow this pastor. I follow that pastor. You need to follow the Bible. I said, you need to follow the Bible. Don't follow the assemblies of God. Don't follow the independent denominator. Don't follow that ministry and this ministry because a man will lead you wrong. Oh, Pastor, stand up. I heard a word from God. He just gave me something for somebody. He wasn't doing nothing more than a palm reading on you. You can go down there and take, pay a gypsy to do that for you. He telling stuff, but he, everything with a ministry is not of God. I'll tell you, in a hunger time, if there's poison, stand up and say something. Amen. Declare truth. There's so many people, and it's, it, I'll tell you, it's coming out. It's coming out. People that say they're one thing. God is, is getting his last day church ready. There's a sifting going on. There's a filtering going on in the church today. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I'm sorry if it steps on your toes sometimes. Those of you watching today, sometimes it, the truth hurts, but the word of God is health. 
He, Paul told Timothy, he said, get sound doctrine. Get sound doctrine. What did he say? He said, preach to that church the whole Bible. Well, I, do, I don't like that part. But there's poison in the pot. Get the whole counsel. It said, they looked around and said, oh, pastor, we can't eat it. It's poison. Elijah. He said, here's what we're going to do. I, you know, Elisha, he was called by God behind some oxen. You know, he's an agriculture guy. I don't know if he knew this already or, or what, but it said that he, he called to them and he said, uh, bring me some meal. I don't know if the Lord just has quickened his spirit, but he said, here's the answer. Bring me some grain. And he said, when he put the grain in, he said, stir it up. Now it's okay. I don't, how do you explain that? that that's pretty simple. Well, I thought for sure you'd come out here and say some big, long hocus pocus and wave your hand over and, and uh, no, just go dip seven times in Jordan. I mean, just, you know, well, I, I, th- I thought for sure you'd set up a lab set and we'd have a, you know, he said, just bring some meal and just put it in the pot. It's too simple. It's just, how is that going to change anybody? How is that going to change the meal? It said, but they poured it in and they stirred it up and poured out and everything was fine. Today... This final point, there's redemption for the ruined. So there's redemption. Pastor, it's too far gone. It's, we might as well pour it out. We might as well dump it. This relationship, my marriage, my kids, my, my husband, my wife, my mom, my dad, they're just too far gone. They're past help. They're past hope. It's just, it's impossible. There's no way that God can turn this around. But there's redemption for what's been ruined. The devil tried to poison things in your life. But let me give you a word today. There is redemption for what's been ruined by sin. And his name is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. I'm the bread that if you'll eat of my body and drink of my blood. Amen. He said, I'm the bread. I'm the true bread of life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, if you'll eat of this bread, you'll have everlasting life. And and Elisha, who was given a precursor, a preview of Jesus, he said, just put some Jesus in it. Put some the presence of God in it. Begin to put Jesus. It's not too late to put Jesus in the situation that you're in. Amen. I said, it's not too far gone that God can't redeem what It's been ruined. You say, she's gone. He's gone. It's over. It's done. No, it's God's turn to do a miracle in the midst of what you got. The devil says, bail out. The devil says, ain't nothing in church. Ain't nothing to religion. You might as well quit. You got hurt by so many people that called themselves Christians. You might as well give up on all that. You know, you prayed in 1948. You prayed in 87 and nothing happened. And you prayed in 2005 and nothing happened. But all it just might as well bail out. No, it's never too late for God to get involved in what's going on. It's never too late for God to get involved in what's happening. The hopeless situation is not too far far gone for God. The God that I serve can do a transformation in the middle of what's happening in your life. Come on, somebody. In the middle of what's going on, Elisha said, let me just give you some help. Pour out the meal into the pot. We bail out before God gets even a shot at it so many times. (laughs) We give up on it. God says, "Bring, bring him to me. Well, your disciples couldn't heal him. He said, bring the child to me. We just gave up on them. They demon possessed, Pastor. They, they just, they just crazy. There ain't no way we're gonna help them. Jesus said, "It's never too late for me to get involved. <laughs> it's never too late for me to heal. Bring the boy to me." And that dad said, "Oh Lord, help my unbelief." He said, "Oh son, rise, be healed." The devil went out of it. We give up a lot quicker than God does on things, right? We've given up. You know, I, sometimes I think, Lord, you know, pastor, and I look at folks, and I was like, Lord, is there any hope for them? And, and just the Holy Spirit quickened my heart. This is a passage again this morning. Judd, keep praying. Keep believing. Just keep going back. 
Keep looking for the sign of the cloud in the skies. Just keep going back. It's never too far for God to redeem what's been ruined. Sometimes we think, Lord, they're never going to like me again. They're never going to call me. Lord, there's, never, there's no way. But God said, let me add it. He said, pour in the grain. He brings that grain, and Elisha pours it in, and the pot that was poison is transformed. How does that happen? It's so simple. It should be more complex than that. But all they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They that call upon Jesus for the remission of sins shall be saved. Today, there is no sin that God, who sent his son, who died on the cross, and he rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven. Who said, I'm coming again. There is no sin that he cannot cover. There is no sin that he cannot cleanse. What has been ruined, he can redeem. Some of us have thrown out and said, they're gone, they're gone. There is, but today, it's not too far gone for God to get involved in what's happening. Hallelujah. Jesus is available, the bread of life. Put him and Jesus can mend the mess that you're in. Your body, your sickness. Amen. The doctor said we've given up hope. Jesus said, let me come. Let me be applied. Jesus wants to be in what's going on today. I'm discouraged. I'm depressed. Put some Jesus. Get the word in you. Amen. Pastor, I've tried all that. One more time. Go back. Go back one more time. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm at a loss, Lord. I, I don't know what to do. Don't throw it away. God can remake the clay. He said, many of, he said, Lord, there, this pottery's broken, it's shattered. But he said, just give me all your pieces and watch me make something beautiful out of the mess that's been going on today. I want to declare to you, and I'm closing. Musicians are coming this morning. Amen. We're going to pray around these altars in a minute. You're going to come. We're going to stand. We're going to kneel. Whatever you need to do. I want you to get ready because God's going to begin to mend. Amen. Because the grain, the bread of life, Jesus Christ, Jesus is going to come and he's going to begin to do the work. Amen. I believe this morning through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not me. It's not my flesh. It's not anything that I could do, but it's the transforming power of the name of Jesus Christ. And this morning, we're going to come up here in just a few minutes and we're going to pray together. I believe God's going to do, begin to redeem the mess and the trial that you're in. There's some things that you've been struggling with this morning. There's some fear and doubt and bitterness. There's some criticalness you've been dealing with. There's some sin that you've been harboring. You said, there's relationships that I'll never get over. There's hurt that I'll never get past. But Jesus wants to come and wrap his arms about you this morning. I feel it this morning. Jesus is here. Jesus is in the place to say, child, let me get in the middle of the mess that you're in. Let me redeem and let you be a testimony to to those around. Oh, there's some. I, I, I watched those guys last night and they begin to say, I was hooked on drugs and meth, but I came to Jesus. I came to Jesus. And some of you, you were get the, the society had given up on you. All the world had given up on you. But Jesus said, I'll take the trash that's been put out to the curb. I'll take the broken pieces and I'll put them back together again. Jesus is what you need in your life right now. Stand with me all over the building. We're going to come in this altar. Amen. I believe God's going to minister to somebody this morning. I'm going to pray for you first. I'm going to believe God right now for you. God will give you the faith to step out one more time. That God give you the faith to reach out to him one more time. Father, in Jesus' name. God, we declare it over this congregation right now. God, I declare over every soul and those that are watching today. Lord, in service with us right now. And God, that your presence and your spirit would deliver. Your power would come and set free. Lord, we need you, Jesus, to come. And in Jesus' name, come we pray. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, Lord. We, pray, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, right now. He said, Pastor, I need God to help with the mess that I'm in. You don't need to tell me about it. I don't have to be, it don't have to be disclosed to anybody. It's just between you and God right now. But you want to come and kneel or stand in the front of this building. I want you to get out of your seat. Come. I want you to stand in front of this building or kneel, whatever it is. Say, Pastor, I need God to do a miracle in my life. I need God to do a miracle in my body. Amen. Don't be afraid to say, Lord, I've made a mess of stuff. Lord, I've made a mess of what's going on. But today, I'm coming for healing. I'm coming for redemption. I've been a mess, but God, I am available for you to do something, a miracle in my life. Come, right now, come on. As they sing this morning, we're going to worship. Amen. God's able to do something in this house today. I believe God's going to deliver some people. God's going to work in some lives today. I believe in this first service, God moving. In this second service, God's going to move this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus is available. Jesus is available. Amen. Don't be afraid. Say, Lord, I believe that you're able to change. 
You need to come. You need prayer this morning. You want to come? You need prayer. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray that God would heal. Come. Just stand. Stand along this front. Amen. This altar service right here. We're going to just be, we're going to believe God today. We're going to believe God today. Right now, step out in faith. Come on. Amen. They're moving. I'm going to wait just a few seconds longer. I'm going to wait a few seconds longer. Somebody's going to get freedom today. Somebody's going to get redemption for the mess and the ruin that you're in. Hallelujah. God's going to do something in your life this morning. You thought it was hopeless, but God said, I'm not done yet. You might be done, but God said, no, let me add it. Nothing's impossible with God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right now, Father, in Jesus' name, I every person in this house, I want you, those of you that are watching, those of you that are in the pews, stretch your hand this way toward these that are in the altar, and I want you to just begin to pray. Amen. If you feel led to come, just lay your hand on their back. Amen. You can come and do that. I need prayers with me. Amen. God is able to heal and deliver right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we praise you this morning because you're the healer. We praise you this morning because you're the power, and Lord, we need you to come. We need you to come right now. In Jesus' name, we to praise you, Lord, that the enemy is a liar. The enemy has no authority over the child of God. And Lord, it seems impossible. We pray right now, God, that you would minister healing to my sister, healing to my brother right now. Let healing come, I pray. Lord, the things that are going on, Lord, let your spirit and your power come. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I hope that you were blessed by the message and encouraged. If you would like special prayer or if you accepted Jesus into your heart, contact us with the information that's on your screen and we would love to hear from you and pray with you in these coming days. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again soon.